So exactly, it's a shift in price direction. Yes, but what is a shift in price direction? It's a break of structure to the downside. No, it's not. You see, you see, that's why people are failing because you're looking for just a break of structure from the downside. Now, let me let, let me quickly go to the charts and just draw in something for you guys quickly. All right, so let's go. Let's just quickly, just quickly look at something. So this is not a change of character, all right? So you see, when price does something like this, let's say price goes up and then down, right? And then goes like that and like that. Is this a change of character? Yes or no? Is that a change of character? <coughs> okay. Is this a change of character? Okay, why is it not a change of character? No, you guys are wrong. Um, why is it not a change of character? It's not even a minor. Okay, someone give me a reason why. Correct. In order for a change of character to take place, we need to take out the previous high. Understand this, right? In order for a change of character to have taken place, right, we would need to take out the previous high. Okay, so character would be something of this nature price goes up comes down goes up why because we've taken out the previous high right so once we take out this previous high right once we take out this previous high we can now look at price falling and taking out the low. Because now we have a high and a low. That is then a changing of character. Okay, so we understand what a change of character is now, right? Great. So let's... Um, let's remove... Okay, so we now understand what a change of character is. Now, let's look at a fair value gap, right? Insufficiency. If price goes up, right? Let's say now price goes down, price goes up, and we get our change of character, right? If we're looking to sell this market off, right? When we talk about an extreme imbalance, 
right? When we talk about an extreme imbalance, which imbalance are we talking about? Are we talking about the low? If there's an imbalance over here, and an imbalance over here, and an imbalance then over here, What is my extreme imbalance? Correct, top. Why? Now, my thing is, why the top? No, not the middle one, the top. The top is correct. Why the top? One, yes. One, it's in premium. We all know that they like to sell off in premium. So the move would take off from premium. But what's the other reason? Well, the reason is because all the pressure is above, it, 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 it's at this level, because it's, it's this level and the pressure of orders that was able to flow market to taking out the previous low. So your first question you need to ask is, what led To this market shift. And where would all the pressure be sitting at in order for price to now take out another? Right? So here we would then say, fine. Price is likely to go higher, right? So price is likely to go higher right? So price is likely to go higher to get involved in a premium state, right? But not only that. This is where all the pressure was. And we can then start taking our trades to the downside. Giving us now a break of structure. So this is all an inducement level. Everybody believes that price. So as much as, you know, there is obviously um, fractal structure within this major structure. You understand? It's the fractal structure that's going to induce you into believing that perhaps the market is going to start to fall from this level or perhaps come up here and then fall from this level when the reality is that price will always go to that high. It will always go extreme. It will always go premium. Make sense?
So if we had to look at a chart now, someone's asking if NASDAQ is going to sell. If we had to look at a chart now, right? If we had to look at an extreme point within this market, right? Then obviously this imbalance would be an extreme point for the next leg to fall lower, right? So this would be an extreme point for price to come up to and then perhaps fall lower, right? It's an extreme point. However though, right? However though, as much as this is an extreme point, right? We need to look at the lower time frame. So we need to look at maybe a four hour time frame and see if there are extreme levels within this leg. So my extreme level would be over here. Now, obviously we have our complete setup and we know where price is going to go to, but price needs a relax, a relaxing um, drop in order to um, move price higher. So perhaps price would move from here, right? Liquidate and then get some more momentum to push price higher, right? Overall though, we still are looking at our daily bias being obviously this level over here. All right, so this is how we work with price action. So here price would come into this extreme imbalance to the downside, right? And then continue going higher in order to get momentum to push price lower. But if we look at a four hour time frame, then on a four hour time frame, we would be looking at the extreme, right? Where is the extreme imbalance on the four hour time frame? So on the four hour time frame, we have no imbalance besides this level over here being our extreme imbalance on this time frame. So price would obviously tap into this level in order to then go and whatever has been generated up here, whether it be equal highs or whatever the case is, price will obviously come in and liquidate that. And our main bias would be obviously the on a daily time frame. So remember, someone's asking me, how do I spot the extreme imbalance? Every chart has an extreme imbalance. It's just about understanding what is an extreme um, imbalance. So on a, on a one hour time frame, right? I want to look at an extreme imbalance situation now, right? So if we look over here, right? Price fell and got momentum, but this was an extreme imbalance, right? So if this is a leg, right? If this is a leg, so this is price going, this is price going down, price going up, price going down, right? So if this is our leg, our extreme imbalance would be over here, which price taps into. So if you look over here, this was the extreme imbalance. Price then used that imbalance over there to then break or rather take this liquidity and now we understand what they did here. So they used, you see, when an imbalance is already been activated, right? Price will come and clear out the rest and not fall from that level. So that first tap into the imbalance, right? 
especially when it comes to an extreme imbalance, is where you want to take your trade. So as price comes down, back into this imbalance that was created from here to here, price comes back, taps into that imbalance, then gets a fall to take out this low or this generated liquidity. Are you with me? So now you're probably asking, but Marco, why doesn't price respect this level again to fill it up? Because everything that was here has been used up. All the orders over here were used up to take out this previous liquidity. Are you with me? So when price comes back to an extreme imbalance, right? Most likely it's going to break out and that's what we see over here, right? Then what you want to do is go to your next leg. So now if we look over here, right? This is obviously price going up, then price going down, right? So as price comes down, right, you want to look at your extreme imbalance, right? This is a one hour time frame, right? So if you look over here, right, if you look over here, we have no imbalance, right? We have no imbalance, no imbalance, no imbalance, no imbalance until this level over here. We have imbalance, but it's not, ex it's not our extreme imbalance. Our extreme imbalance is the very first imbalance that created this leg to take out this liquidity. All right. So I would now say price could come to this extreme imbalance. Right? So price would come to this level, right? And this is just an inducement. So price will come to this level, everybody's looking at this level to sell off, right? So price comes to this level, comes down, and then goes to the extreme imbalance. And then from the extreme imbalance, gives us a change of character. And then from there, price starts to fall. You with me? Well, there's a simple strategy to this, right? So if we're going into this imbalance, right? My technique and what I teach is that you want to look on a lower time frame, but you want to look at this level, right? You want to look at this level that price might tap into after inducing whoever they needed to induce at this level why because this is an extreme imbalance price wants to tap into the extreme imbalance right so on this at this extreme imbalance you want to go to a five minute time frame or even a one minute time frame right so you want to go to a one minute time frame and at this imbalance right as price comes to this level right let's say price comes I'm just going to make an example. Price comes up and then price comes and we're now going to tap into this 
one minute in balance. So we're looking for price and only, only within that imbalance, right? So let's say now we're looking for price to go, let's say, up, down, up. I'm making, I'm just making an example. Down, up, down, up, down. Once price taps in, I'm looking for a change of character, right? So now I'm looking for price to come down, right? Over here will be a one minute order block. Or as I said also, a extreme imbalance. Price will then tap into that extreme imbalance and continue lower. So once price taps into that extreme imbalance, you can then take your trade from this level. This is something I've back tested over and over and over and over and over again. And um, and at the end of the day, as win rates over and over and over again, as long as you understand what you're looking for and you understand structure. So where was our change of character, right? If we look here, price took out that high, then price took out this low. Right? Then price went up into this extreme imbalance to give us a break of structure to say, listen, the trend has changed from being bearish, sorry, bullish to now being bearish. And now we can go back to perhaps our daily time frame and look at that level that we spoke about as being our take profit level. So we would say an extreme imbalance like this. We would look on a lower time frame for other extreme imbalances, but we would then take. So we would obviously then create those equal highs perhaps, and then price would then either come in here to go higher, or price could come lower. But that will all, you know, differentiate within the chart work and how we see price action revealing itself. All right. Make sense?
one last thing now. Um, so here, remember, you always want to see price taking out the high, right? The minute price fails to take out the high, it's an indication that price wants to start selling off. So what I mean by that is even on a daily time frame, right? What you want to see is price taking out the high. So here, price took out the high. Right, let's look at this. Here, price took out the high. Here, price took out the high. Here, price took out the high. So, if this candle closes and the next candle opens, and the next candle opens, Let's say over here, right? Let's say it opens over here, but, or this candle, let's say this candle closes. We have our wick. Right, sorry guys, this is unfortunately a one minute time frame, but you can see, right? And the wick, guys, and we do not take out this high. That is then an indication that price then wants to start to sell off. And we can then target this low. And obviously you would get a better entry on a what on a lower time frame but that is how we see it if you look over here once price took out this high if you look over here once price took out this once price failed to take out this high it was showing you a loss of momentum. What happened? Price started to fall. You understand? But if you look over here, this is where the fall started. So if you look over here, price failed, right? And then what happened? Simple price action, guys. Price failed to take out this high. Came down, went for a retest, Price then started to fail to take out this high. And then what happened? Price fell and collapsed. Okay, it's simple price action. There's nothing difficult here. Understanding that here, price went up, took out the high, here, took out this one, but then failed. Fell, came back for a retest, Right, soon as price went up, price failed to take out this level over here and price then fell. Are you with me? Every time this happens, guys, look here. What happened here? Yeah, what happened at this fall? Price came up. The next candle that failed, it collapsed. From here, price collapsed. Okay, simple price action. Price collapsed. Why? Because price failed to take out this high. Okay, so you can get involved over here, right? When price takes out this low, giving you a change of character on a lower time frame, right over here, and you can then get involved and you can start to trade, right? And you would then trade some kind of imbalance and that would be this level over here, okay? Something as simple as that. Simple setup, simple setup that I could have traded.
you want to get funded by prop firms, trust me, something as simple as this on the lower time frame is going to work for you. We're on the same page. What if it takes out the higher high? Then it means that you're not going to sell. If price takes out a high, it means it's got enough power to take out the next high, unless it fails the next high. So let's look at this again one last time all right so here price made a high look at this here price made a high what did it do it took out a high so price took out this high to create a new high then what happened this candle closed the next candle started, but failed to take out the high. And we had a clash. Price fell. Right? What could you target? You could target a imbalance. On a lower time frame, you could probably target an extreme imbalance somewhere over here. Right? So if you look, you could have then waited for this candle to close. This candle opened and it didn't open, right? If this candle didn't open between the opening of the body, you would then sell off. So if price did not even come into this body, you could then sell off. It's telling you that there's no pressure within the buyers and the sellers are then in charge, okay? So here, price does not tap into this body, right? Price does not tap into that body and price then starts to fall, which means that these orders would be left behind that price would then tap into. As you can see, price taps in, collects those orders and continues the fall. Okay, simple as that. Simple as that, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at price action.